Welcome to Lesson 1, Exploring Photoshop. In this lesson, you're offered the opportunity to dive right into Adobe Photoshop CS5 and put together an exciting composition. This lesson was created to help current users or fast learners quickly discover some of the hottest new features in Photoshop CS5. If you're unfamiliar with Photoshop and maybe at a more beginner level, you might want to start with Lesson 2, continue on, and come back to this at the end. So I've got the finished composition open in front of me and you can see that it is created from several layers, text layers. We have some other layers that have layer masks applied to them, something that's been warped in the original background file. We're gonna go through and create this composition from scratch. So first of all, I am selecting File, Browse and Bridge. This is the method in which I prefer to work, opening up in Bridge. There's also Mini Bridge, which is available to you, and I'll be showing you how to use that in some of the later lessons as well. I'm opening up PS0101, and you'll see that this image consists of three different layers. And this is actually a panoramic view, and you'll see that when I turn off and on the visibility, you can see that each one of these layers is a different area of the image. So let me go ahead and show you the first one, second one, third one. And I want to put these all together into one image. So I'm going to take advantage of something that's been in Photoshop for several versions, and that is the Align Layers feature. And in order to take advantage of that, I'm just selecting the top layer and then shift-clicking on the bottom layer, selecting all three layers. And when I do that and go to my Move tool, you'll see that there is an icon up here that is called Auto Align Layers. And when I click on this, it brings up a dialog box. And typically, if you're taking panoramic images that were taken individually, you would just leave the projection at auto, and you'll see that I can click on OK. It's going to run through the process of merging these three images together. Now, it did an OK job. There are some transparent edges on here a little bit, so I'm just going to press Command or Control-0 to fit this in the window. And then I'm pressing C because I want to select the crop tool. And you can see that activated the crop tool. And I'm clicking and dragging to make sure that I'm cropping down to the actual image area. Now, when I do this, you're seeing a preview of where the crop area is. I am having a little bit of a problem where it's snapping. You'll see that under view, I can turn off the snap. It's checked right now, which means it's active. And that way I can control this a little better. Now, once I've cropped this, I'm going to press the return or enter key, and now I've got my image ready to go. Next, I'm going to merge these layers together. So you'll see I have all three selected, and I'm choosing from the Layers panel menu that I want to merge these layers. Now, if I want to be totally accurate, I can, of course, name this water so that I can tell a little bit better what this layer is as I add additional layers, but that's really up to you and your workflow. Next, I'm going to bring in another image. So I am again choosing File, Browse and Bridge, and I'm selecting the PS102 image. Now, in order to see two images at once, I am choosing the Arrange Documents 2 Up option. And that way, I can take my Move tool and I can drag and drop one image over to the other. And just to save on scratch space, I'm going to go ahead and close the second file. In fact, I'm going to close up my original done file too, just again to save on memory space. Now, I've got this image here, and perhaps I really like the water, but I don't necessarily want the surfer in here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I want to show you that there's a new feature that allows you to retouch based upon the surrounding content. Now, I'm pressing Control minus a little bit, and I want you to notice something. When I click to zoom in, you'll see a rather quick zoom. If you go to your zoom tool, you'll see that as a default, something called scrubby zoom is on. I typically don't have this on just because I like to control my zoom a little bit better. Notice that when I have scrubby zoom on that I quickly zoom in, depending upon how long I hold my mouse. And if I want to go back out, I can always hit control minus 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 or command minus minus or just control or command zero. But what I like to do is turn this off 
take my zoom tool and click and drag. So it's really up to you and how you want to control your zoom. Now in here, I'm selecting the spot healing brush and I'm turning on content aware. And you'll notice that if I start painting this, that Photoshop tries to become aware of what is surrounding the item that I'm painting. So as I work on this, I'll just go ahead and do a quick, really quick brush out of this entire surfer. And you can get better or worse results depending upon the content in your image. Replacing something like trees and flowers is very easy because there's a lot of detail there and it's hard to tell that something's been retouched. Something like this might be a little bit more difficult but still does a much better job than perhaps you would do if you were retouching on your own. So obviously he doesn't have any footsteps here anymore. So I wanna get rid of those and maybe that texture of the water needs to match a little bit more with the surrounding water. And then I'm gonna back out, control zero. Now I want to fade this image from this water into this water. And I'm gonna do a real quick fade by taking this layer. And again, I can name it if I want. I'm just gonna call this beach. While this layer is active, I'm going down to click on add layer mask. Nothing happens because I didn't have anything selected, but I can take my gradient tool and while I'm on the active mask, now be careful, here's my image. You can see it's highlighted over here. Here's my mask. And when this is highlighted, I can take my gradient tool and I can click and drag and I'm clicking and dragging from the left and going to the right. And you'll see that it's creating a fade from one image to another. Now I'm holding down my Alt or Option key and clicking on this mask so you can see what it is. It's simply a black to white gradient and wherever the black is or gray, it's fading out that image or covering it up completely. And then you'll see where the white is, it's exposing the image so that when you look at this, you can kind of see what's happening here. Okay, next we're gonna incorporate another image into here. So I'm choosing File, Browse, and Bridge and opening up the PS0101 03 image, I'm again going up to the Arrange Documents icon in the application bar and choosing to up. I'm taking my Move tool and dragging this guy over into my other image. And now closing this image up, I'm gonna slide him over to the right a little bit. And I wanna make a selection of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tool that was introduced in CS4, which is the quick selection tool. And I'm just gonna use the quick selection tool to select this wake border. I deselect, do this a little better, there we go. And it doesn't have to be a perfect selection for what I'm doing, but if I do accidentally select more, I can hold down my Alt or Option key and take out some of the selection. I'm going to be using a mask, which means that if it's not perfect, I can always paint it out a little better later. Now, so if I wanna add a selection, I just click. If I wanna delete a selection, I hold down my Alt or Option key. Now I've got this selection. He kind of looks a little bit like helmet head here, but we're gonna fix this using the new Refine Edge tool. I am gonna come in here and delete this little selection, but you'll notice that my cursor is very large here. If I use my left bracket, I can shrink this down a little bit and then hold down my Alt or Option key to delete that section. I'm going up to Refine Edge. Now, the Refine Edge button appears on the options of any of your selection tools. So when I click on this, it opens up a separate panel and you can see what my selection looks like. Now, this kind of stuff down here I can fix real easily in the mask. What I'm concerned with here is the hair. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Now you'll notice that I can change an edge detection radius. In addition to using that in a new refined radius tool, I can get a pretty good selection of his hair. So I'm gonna increase this to about an eight. And then take the refine radius tool, and I'm just gonna paint over this area that didn't really have a great selection made out of it. And you'll see that it's remaking that selection or going into some of those areas that were really difficult to get a hold of. 
Now, once I'm done with this, I don't really want to leave this as just a selection. I want to make it a mask. So I've made a much better selection of his hair. And one of my favorite features in the new Refine Edge dialog box is this output section because I can come down here and I can choose how I want to output this, not just as a selection, but I can use layer mask or new layer with layer mask. I'm just going to indicate that I want to layer mask, click on this and click OK. And you see, look at that. It created a layer mask automatically. Now I'm holding down my Option key or Alt key, and you can see how good that mask is. I could retouch it in here if I want, like for instance, I could take my paintbrush with a little bit of white and clean up this if I needed to, but I can also do this visually. So for instance, if I click out onto the image and I scroll down, you'll see that I missed a little bit of the hand. I simply activate that mask, make sure I have white selected and a brush, and then I can paint this back in just to clean up what maybe I didn't get with the quick selection tool. Now I'm going a little bit over this intentionally because I want to show you that I can press X, that switches to put the black forward, and then I can clean that up. X, clean this up. So these edges were relatively simple, and I can just paint these in to recover this if I didn't do a great selection to begin with. The part that I was really concerned with was the hair, and you'll see that that came in extremely well. Okay, next I'm going to add the text. So I'm pressing Command or Control Zero. I'm going to my Type tool, and I want Myriad Pro, and I also want it to be bold. And I'm going to change the font size to about 130. I'm going to click once, and I'm typing SUMMER in all caps. Drag that down a little bit. Next in my composition, I want this to be about a 30% opacity, so I can just press three and that changes that for me. I'm adding another text layer. But before I do that, I need to create another text area. So I'm selecting my type tool and I'm clicking and dragging and typing in this text area, 2010 or whatever year it is that you're working on this. I'm going to kern this in a little bit. That means just putting your cursor between some of the letters or numbers, holding down the Alt or Option key, and then pressing the arrow in to go in or out to go out. So I want to bring this in just a little bit to clean up this text. Next, I'm switching to my Move tool, and I'm just going to press Control or Command T Hold down my shift key and swap this around a little bit and slide this guy over. When I'm done making my transform, I just hit the return or enter key. Now this particular text, I wanna make it a darker color. I can either make it black or even sample some of the gray from this image. So I am taking my type tool, reselecting that type. You'll notice at the top, I have the set the text color in the options bar. I can click on that once, open up the text color pane, and then just sample this black color if I want, or just click on a color in the color pane and click OK. To exit the type tool, don't press the return key. A lot of people do that and then they get an extra line. If you wanna use a keyboard shortcut to confirm that you made your text edit and you're all done, you hold down the control and then hit the return key or command return. Now I'm pressing three to make that 30% opaque as well. The last thing we're gonna do is take advantage of the new Puppet Warp feature. The Puppet Warp feature can be used for taking entire arms and legs and rearranging them in an image or for more abstract art, like what we're gonna do with the water. So I'm selecting this water background layer and I'm going to duplicate it. And how I'm going to duplicate it is just by simply dragging it down to the new icon in the layers panel. I'm gonna call this water top. And I'm going to then go to edit puppet warp. Now puppet warp produces a mesh and you'll see that I can create various pins in this mesh. These pins could be used to move entire legs, arms, different places, or to create abstract art like we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead in and kind of just 
nail down where I want these pins. I'm creating a zigzag pattern in here and you'll notice that I'm also making sure that I have a pin at the end so that I don't totally distort this. In fact, I'll put this over here. And you'll notice that I can select these individual pins or hold down the shift key and select multiple pins. Just give this a little drag and they all warp together. Now, if I wanna pull the warp down on these bottom pins, I can also select on these. And if necessary, pull these down. So maybe just a little bit, but since I kept that original layer down below, I shouldn't have to pull these the whole way out. When I'm done, I just confirm that's what I want, and then I've got my completed composition.